Well, good morning, everyone, and how are you doing today? How are you, Fernando? Good. Yeah? Yeah. That's wonderful. I hope you guys are doing well, too. Today, we have a Chevy Cruze, and not only, this, this is a special Chevy Cruze. Let me show you why. So inside this Chevy Cruze, it has that right there. That's right, this one has a factory Pioneer system, which means it has door speakers, it has tweeters, it has a center channel, it may have a subwoofer, we're looking right now. Sometimes when you get a car in, you don't know, and you have to do some investigating. So right now, we're actually getting ready to do the investigating. We have the car all dressed up, you know, we got our cool little, yeah. Let me show you what we are putting in, so like we show you the constant, and then we'll go back into the car. So first up, we have some R-type components for the front. We have some R-type coaxles for the rear. We have some road kill. We're gonna be using the fast strings. We're also gonna be doing, I think, an R-type subwoofer and a seal box. I don't know yet, but that's what we have so far. I mean, we have the speakers. Now, we're not replacing the radio because, along with Pioneer, it has the cool MyLink screen in the dash, which means he wants to keep that. Honestly, I don't even think they make a dash kit for it. So let's join Fernando in the trunk right now, and we're doing our archaeology audio. All right, what have we found? All right, so we find the, the amplifier on the passenger side, of course, in the trunk. Look at that. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, yeah. So, so sexy. So sexy. So now that we know that it's here, there's a couple things we have to do. First and foremost, we have to find out what is feeding this, meaning what type of signal. Is it a fixed from the radio? Is it a variable from the radio? That's gonna tell us a lot, because if it's, let's say, variable, we may just need to add some RCAs to it, and then we can put whatever processor we want in this thing and tune the heck out of it. If it's fixed, that means we're gonna have to go after the amplifier, which means we might need to do summing, and then we'll have to figure out how many channels it has, and from there we have to figure out what processor we want to go with. This is the first part of, of figuring this out, what to recommend to this customer. Now he's like, we, we went over like six different things and he's like, okay, yeah, all these work. Let's just figure out which one we want to go with and we'll go from there. What we want to do now is we're going to get an RTA, we're going to get a digital multimeter, we're going to get a tone generator, and we're going to get a polarity tester. Four tools. Now, I know you guys don't have all these tools and that's okay. We'll show you how to do it with our having all those tools because I know a lot of you get into the situation it's like how do I integrate in my factory amplifier bare minimum you're gonna need a digital multimeter and a 9 volt battery bare minimum okay let's get some tools RTA digital multimeter handheld portable polarity tester PT 9a 9 volt battery what are we missing tone generator tone generator so before we can test the output of the radio we need to figure out which plug has that on it. The easiest way to do that is to figure out which plug has the speakers on it. We are going to do that first. All right, lastly, before we start, we wanna get some paper so we can write this stuff down. Anytime I start my notes, what I do is write down the year, make and model of the car. In this case, it has a Pioneer system, so I wanna write that. I wanna write where the amplifier is at, obviously, and I'm gonna write that it has three plugs. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the first plug, and this is an eight pin plug, so we'll write down eight pin plug. Now, my guess is this one has the power and ground because it has the two fattest wires in it. For that, we're going to go ahead and take our digital multimeter. We're going to set it to volts DC. Go ahead and grab the ground here. We have 12 volts. We have ground. So this is showing us right here that this is the main power for the amplifier. We're gonna call that the power harness. On this harness, there's four other wires and they kind of look like speaker wires. And looking at the rear deck, I'm thinking they're the rear deck subwoofers. Now this has rear deck speakers and rear door speakers. It's six and a half in the rear door and six by nines in the rear deck. These six by nines are the subwoofer. We're going to leave the rear door speakers, just leave them disconnected because he likes rear deck speakers. So we're actually gonna put the Alpine R-types back here. Now what we wanna do real quick is just go ahead and take our tone generator. Sure enough, that is the rear deck speakers. We're gonna come back to those. We just, we're doing process elimination right now. Next, we'll grab the next plug. This is a 16 pin plug. Now this also looks like a speaker plug. We'll take our tone generator. Rear door, other rear door. Is that just the door? And the door and the tweeter. The door and the tweeter? What's that? Is this the driver's door? 
Alright, so how this harness is broken apart is the top row here is the driver's side and the bottom row here is the passenger side. Alright, so as I said, you don't need all these cool tools to do this. Digital multimeter, 9 volt. What we want to do is set our digital multimeter to continuity. For this, we just grab two plugs, but you don't need it. You just need some wire that you can jam into this harness. And we'll go ahead and we'll test this here. Continuity. We have three ohm that's what it's telling us and then we can test the one next to it those are six ohm three ohm six ohm chances are good those are speakers now what we'll do is we'll take our nine volt and for this you're going to want a front so we'll go ahead and clip it on and then we'll tap it if you can hear that, that's telling us that it's the driver's front. If you pay attention to the positive and negative on the battery and you have the door panel off, the speaker is going to move out. That's going to tell you which color on here is positive. You can also just hold a flashlight up to the grill and if you can see the speaker moving out, it's positive. And if it's moving in, it's, it's negative. All you need, digital multimeter, battery, and you're done. So you can go through all four of them like we did with the tone generator and figure it out for yourself with, with minimal tools. What we're going to do though, is we're going to go ahead and use our PT9A, which is gonna create that same popping sound. Now, if you add this to the mix with your nine volt, it'll do the same thing. You just, all this does is measure the air coming off of the speaker and you can measure that clip, that pop, pop, pop and see if it's in polarity or not. So we'll go ahead and start with our first one here, the popping noise. This is green, green, black this is the color from the factory and the green is positive and the green black is negative. We'll move on to the next two. What do you got? Both the tweeter and the mid-range? Mm -hmm. Now the reason why I asked both tweeter and mid-range is because you want to test them both with whatever you're feeding them with because a lot of the times the tweeters wired up backwards. By the way, that was blue, brown, blue. Blue is positive. Okay, green. That's passenger's side. And that's the driver's or passenger front door. Yellow, yellow, black. That is negative. Really? No. I think it's weird. Positive. Really? That's green. That's freaking strange. That's backwards. On this plug, the passenger rear door isn't in sequence with all the other doors. All the other doors, it goes positive, negative, then positive, negative, positive, negative. This door is negative, positive. If you're just assuming that just because three of them are all in the right direction, that the fourth one would be, don't. It's not. Number four, as we call it, is backwards. That's messed up. What the heck were they thinking? While we're going ahead and doing this, we'll go ahead and do the rear deck. Green. So on the rear deck, there's a green on the driver's side and a gray blue on the passenger side. Those are both the positives. So now we'll move on to the last plug, which is locked into place. So the last plug is also a 16 pin plug. It's just smaller. So we're gonna call it the small. And this has eight wires and then two extra little wires on it. There's a purple blue. Now in the past, we've seen that the purple blue wire is ANC or fake engine noise, which we may or may not have to worry about. What we wanna do now though, is go ahead and turn on the radio. We're gonna see what kind of voltage is coming out of this. And for that, we're gonna go ahead and use our digital multimeter set to AC, which is the V with the squiggly line. And also we're gonna use our RTA. So before we actually put the meter on this, Let's take a pause here. If you have a disc or a phone or something like that that has pink noise on it, that would be ideal because it's a constant sound. If you don't, you can play a radio or a CD or something like that, but it's gonna be constantly going up and down and variable, which is not gonna be the greatest thing for using one of these. We're gonna go ahead and grab our CD with pink noise on it. Now, if you need pink noise, you can go to DNF tool drawer and on the meters page, you can actually download a file with pink noise on it. Now, pink noise just sounds like fuzz. It's just sound, but that will make it easier. Now we'll go ahead and insert our probes. Now we're gonna guess on this because the speakers were, were across 
this way, we're gonna assume that these are too. They're either gonna be like this or like that, and I'm not doing the cross. Go ahead, turn it up. Turn it down. Ooh. All right, let me show you what's going on here. All right, so that's all the way down. Go ahead and turn it up. Now this is what we wanted to see. This means it's variable voltage. Turn it down again. So this means that the output of the radio is turning up and down at the radio and not at the amplifier. This is a good thing. GM does this. They do this on the Camaro too. If you've got like a premium sound system in your Camaro, it has variable voltage. It's pretty nice. Now we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the RTA so we can actually see what the signal looks like. Go ahead and turn it back up. So what we're looking at here is the sound coming out of the radio. Turn it down. Turn it up. And that is the flattest I've ever seen come out of a factory radio. Look at that. Wow. Holy yeah. Holy. That is, there's, that's insane. That's pretty good. That's freaking awesome. That's, that's amazing. Go to the next channel here. We have the same thing. Oh, no. Same thing. Same thing. Wow. I'm uh, wow. I'm I'm actually kind of speechless. Most of the time, that looks crazy, wonky. Wow, <laughs> dude. That's awesome. All right. Now, what we want to do is we need to figure out what is front, rear, left, right out of these eight wires because we don't know. So to do that, we're gonna just use the old fashioned balance and fader on the radio. We're gonna go back to the digital multimeter and we're gonna see which one of these four is actually putting out signal. Okay, I'm in number two. You're on two? Yeah. All right, so the bottom right. All right, go ahead and switch it to a different channel. We're going to four now. That's the volume up. Volume is up. Turn it down. Okay. Brown, white, blue, black. On the plug, the bottom right was number two, which is passenger front. Go up one and over. That's number four, which is the passenger rear. Okay, change it. All right, number one. Volume all the way up. All right, turn it down. And this would be the one directly below four is one. That leaves us one left. All right, let's try three. All right, so that's brown, green, black. So now what we've done is we've mapped our signal out of this, so we're golden. What we don't know still is the polarity of these wires. We, we don't know what's what. That's the only headache at this point is figuring out out of the radio what's positive, what's negative. The way you could do it is if you had the harness for behind the radio, you could pull the radio out and you could check behind the radio to see what is positive, what is negative. We're not doing that because we're not pulling the radio out of the dash. So this is one where you are going to have to get a little tricky on. So what we're doing on this test is we've gone ahead and grabbed one of our test speakers. These are just, it's just a generic factory speaker. You could use one of the speakers you're pulling out of the car to do this. You will need this handheld polarity tester. You gotta have this. These things are 15 bucks. I gotta be honest, if you don't have one and you're doing this, you, you should have one. You can use it in your, for home stereo, use it for car audio. Just pick one up. We've gone ahead and plugged in some wire into the harness and we have our test speaker. We're playing that same polarity pop sound. Now, as far as getting that polarity pop sound for the radio, there again, we have it on our DF tool drawer. You can download it there. There's apps you can get for your phone, one called Speaker Pop. So you can find a polarity pop sound. What it's doing, it's popping this speaker. You wanna use something small and with a tweeter. And then we're gonna just take this. Lights up green. We know we've picked the right color. In this case, we have this backwards. Switch them. All right, so we have it right now. That means that the blue with the brown white, brown white is brown. So we'll go ahead and move on to our next pair. 
and we'll repeat the process on all these until we've metered them all to figure out what the polarity. Now this is a General Motors car. What that means is that the door chime goes through the driver's front door. The ding, ding, ding. When we hook this speaker up to it, hit pause. That means that the door chime is coming from the radio into the amplifier, which means that when we amplify it, we're still gonna have the chime going through that door. If we didn't want that, we could just use the rear speakers and we could feed that into something else that would power, let's say, the center channel, a small amplifier. There's, there's lots of ways to get around it. In this case, it'll be okay. It's not gonna be that loud. It started over. Now there again, on this one, there was three that were all going one direction and the fourth wasn't. In this case, it was the driver's front door was backwards from all the others, just like the passenger rear door was backwards from all the others. General Motors is, is being funny, ha ha, very funny guys. Now, the last thing we wanna test is to see if there is any form of fake engine noise, automatic noise canceling, or anything like that that's coming from the radio that might affect us. Now, to do that, it's gonna be very similar to testing front rear left right with this guy here we're going to also plug in our rta we're really just concerned with the front speakers those are typically the ones that make the noise so for that we're going to go ahead and get all this stuff plugged back into the front and then we will shut all the doors roll up the window and see if we get any silliness coming from this all right so what we're looking at here is the signal all the way up on the two front doors go ahead and turn it down Now go ahead and rev the engine. And what we're looking for is any form of fluctuation in these, any form of number movement, anything at all. On the RTA, what we'd see is we'd actually see a ripple over here that would be the noise cancellation kicking in because usually it affects the low end. And then you'd see it in here because you'd see the voltage change. We don't see any of that on this. The other thing too with cancellation is there's usually microphones located on the ceiling up by the grab bars or in the center of the headliner in the GMs. In this case, we didn't see any. The other thing too is, for the most part, the fake engine noise, the growling sound, GM doesn't do that in most of their cars, but you might not have a GM, so it was helpful to figure out how to test it. Now, a couple other things to take in consideration when doing this is backup sensors, Bluetooth, navigation, OnStar, anything else that is created from the head unit that passes through the radio. That's important to see if those things are coming into the amplifier. This car doesn't have backup sensors, so we don't have to worry about it. What you'd want to do though, is figure out where the sound is coming in, so for, or where the sound is coming out. So for example, plug everything back in, if, see if the backup sensors make noise out of, let's say the rear speakers or the front speakers. If they make sound out of the front speakers or the rear speakers, it really doesn't matter. Go ahead and take your test speaker and just like we did the polarity test see when it's unplugged if that signal comes out of just like we heard the door chime coming out of the front see if it still does it that way you'll know if it's coming from the radio or the amplifier because if it's not coming from the radio that means it's coming from something else and that could cause you problems because you don't want your customer to lose their backup sensor the same is true with like OnStar or Bluetooth or, or navigation you want to test all those two to make sure that they're working. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going home. <laughs> so at this point, we're pretty good. We have everything that we need as far as what's gonna go where. Now what we have to do is figure out what we're going to do for amplifier and processor. We were kind of worried that, you know, we were gonna have to do summing and stuff like that. And if we were gonna have to do summing, we were gonna use a summing processor. And then if we weren't gonna do summing, we were gonna use a processor that doesn't need to do summing. Then of course there's amplifiers with processors built into them. So there's, there's a lot of scenarios here. We'll go talk to the customer and figure out what we want to do. All right, so here's what we've come up with. After talking with the customer and explaining to him what we found, about how we have a nice signal coming back that we can just add RCAs to, he's not really big on the whole idea of the EQ. We were going to do an EQ when we thought we had some issues that we were gonna have to fix. He's really not into time alignment. He's like, no, I just, I just like my sound, you know, 
he likes rear fill and he likes he likes everything. That's why we're doing six by nines in the back and not six and a half in the door that we're gonna have to lay to and all that fun stuff. He's like, no, no, I wanna hear them. I'm like, okay, cool. It has a three band EQ built into the radio, basement treble. He's used to those, he's comfortable with those. So what we decided to do is leave the EQ out of the equation for right now. The nice thing about things like the DSR-1 is that they're RCA in, RCA out, power ground accessory, real easy to install later on, and they're small, they're like this big. If he decides he wants to add one down the road, we've already discussed it'd be simple enough to add in if he wants more adjustment, the 32 bands and all that other stuff. But right out of the gate, he's like, you know what? No, I, I think I'm gonna pass on that for right now. What can I do for power? We're gonna do this guy. This is the T1005. For those of you guys that haven't seen this, this is a five channel amp. This one's specking in at 1190 watts. It's about the size of a carton of cigarettes for those of you guys that know what that is. So we're gonna hide this in the car somewhere. He also said he wants a base knob. So we're gonna go with this guy. This is the base knob for that amp. This is the PLC2, so that'll give us control. And then the other cool thing is if you do one of these, this is a Rockford Power Kit. They actually extend the warranty for you as long as you have somebody like us put it in. So it has to be installed by, a, you know, like a Rockford dealer. They give you an extra year warranty. So that means now this gets a two year warranty as opposed to a one year warranty. That's pretty cool, Fernando, right? My thoughts exactly. So now the question is, where are we gonna put it in the car? The top end and seat. Now, ideally we wanna try to go somewhere up front here, like underneath one of the seats. This is an eight gauge kit, and that would be a short enough run to where we can get away with using eight gauge, because these amplifiers, all of these amplifiers, only have an eight gauge input. If we have to go to the trunk with it, then we're gonna swap this kit out for a four gauge kit, and we're gonna use the distribution block, because it's a longer run, so we're gonna be drawing way more. It's, it's yeah. Let's hop in and see if it'll fit. Under the seat, it's gonna be. Let me show you. So this is the room we have to deal with. The amplifier is pretty much side to side. There is about a inch and a half gap on the side. And that's okay, because the only thing that actually runs into the amp is this guy here, which is the power wire. On this end, the RCAs, there are no RCAs. It's just these plugs right here. The RCAs are attached via an actual plug. We don't have to worry about them sticking out and taking up a bunch of room. The plan is to build a T-shaped bracket that goes up and along and will screw up underneath these bolts and then be flat where this is so that this just slides right underneath there. We bolt it in place and you're good to go. He rides with his seat pretty much all the way back. He's a tall fella. So we are gonna use the eight gauge for this because the battery is, is right up there. So it's only gonna be like a six foot run. Plenty for what we're trying to do here. Let's build a bracket, let's get the seat out. So much to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure where the screws are. They normally have one on the window switches right here like in the cup. The second one they normally have in the handle. Grab your angle pry tool and um, pick tool, I'm sorry. Pop it out, be careful. And for this one, it's a torque, and that's a 15, T15. Then you're gonna grab your plastic pry tool. Be careful. Now in this corner, it looks like this one comes out first. There you go. Sometimes the clips stay in, so just take it out, put it back in so you don't lose it. This is our normal GM bracket. Real quick, this is the factory speaker, this guy right here. See this stuff right here? This is foam. Now, you guys ask, why do I need fast drinks? See this, see this groove right there? That's from where the door panel sits on top of this. Factory uses fast drinks. So when you're replacing your speakers, add fast drinks. It's going to make sure that that sound all comes through the door panel. I can't stress that enough. You guys, some of you guys out there get it because you come and go, I can't believe they didn't add. This is why. They're like 30 bucks. It's totally worth the extra money to do it. I get it if you're buying a $79 set of speakers or a $59 set of speakers, that's half the price of the speaker. I totally understand. But this is a piece of crap and it has it. And these don't sound too bad right out of the get-go. Just a thought. So like we say, we're gonna use fast rings. It came with three pieces. The big piece is gonna be all the way to the back. 
now the second piece is gonna be behind the speaker like this and the third piece is gonna be in the end for these brackets we're gonna use the best kits bkgm sb356 so this is like factory fit you can use the factory seven millimeter and we also like to put two screws just to make sure it's really tight and it doesn't move but before that we're gonna put some foam in the back of the bracket and in the front So now that we have our wires in here, we're going back to the notes that Dean make and we have to see which one is going to be the positive and negative. Our notes say yellow is positive, yellow black is negative. So we have all the raw kill in the back and the front. The last piece of the puzzle is going to be the fast ring. So to remove the seat, it's a T50 Torx. Now in case you're wondering, removing seat bolts can be some of the hardest bolts in the cars to get out because they use Loctite to hold them in place. And they used a lot in these. Now the neat thing about these seats in this particular car is there's only two screws that hold them in, those ones here in the back that we just took out. Once you get those out, you just lift up on the seat and kind of pull backwards. There's these little hooks in the front and then you can lift up the seat and in this case, Pushed it all the way forward. The seat rails are out of the way. So now we'll get a tape measure, take some measurements. So the basic shape we want is gonna be is gonna be like a T, and the width we have going across is 13 inches, and the depth we're gonna have eight inches. So we're gonna need about four and a half inches off of the width to make these bends here. We need to cut out a piece that's 22 by eight, and then we'll cut out the extra pieces. So let's head over to the saw. have our basic t-shape all set and ready to go now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat these sides up here and here get it into the car and let it mimic the shape of the floor so we went ahead and heated up the first bend it's gonna be the bottom one so we can get this in nice and flat wear gloves this stuff's hot and we'll go ahead and mark where we need to heat up for our next bend let's take it back over to the bench and heat it up Do one side at a time. Now once you get it kind of cool, what you can do is run some water over it and that'll lock it in place. Now we just need to mark where the holes are for the seat, so we can drill those. So make sure when you drill the holes, you drill them so they're big enough so that all the screws and pins will go back in. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and test fit it back into place. Make sure we have all the clearance and everything will work though. Go ahead and latch the seat in place. The pins go in. We can see our screw holes, they're good. The amplifier will mount just like this right here. We went ahead and slid the seat back while the camera was off just to make sure. So we're good. Now all we need to do is get this thing screwed in place, start running the wires. Now how the wires are gonna go is the power is gonna go up that way and all the signal and speakers are actually gonna come back this way because the amplifier is back here. And that's the plan anyways. See how it goes. The tweeter actually fits really nice in the factory location. This one just pop out, have clips. I just put this one in, really tight. I'm gonna put the cover, that's the foam that they came with the Alpine tweeters, and that's it. So the crossover, we put it on the side. You pop this panel out and the crossover is gonna stay there. So naturally, we don't like to cut the harnesses if we can avoid it. We have tons of harnesses. We go through the inventory. We try to find them. We order them online. We, you know, we scour the internet to try to find harnesses so we don't have to cut them. This is no different. We don't wanna cut these. And we have three harnesses that are close, I think, to what we need. One is our Car AV Volvo harness that we've used. This is the 12032. And then we have two other 
other harnesses for the signal, one is the American International, which is PAC, but for some reason this one doesn't make it into the PAC line. The GWH46, I don't know, he's got it scribbled out. Anyways, it, it's this guy here. And then we have a Metro harness, which is this one, which is a 702104. One of these harnesses will probably plug in. We need two of them. So let's head to the back and see what we got. Now the first one up is going to be for speakers. That's the Volvo harness. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that plugs in. It's pin drawn, of course, but that's okay. And really, we need just two wires off of this, just the front two. The rear two are on the main power plug. We'll just run wires to those because I don't want to cut this for four wires. The next one is the signal, which is kind of more important. Ooh, wow, plugs right in. All right, so this American International harness plugs right into that. There again, it's not pinned right at all, but that's okay. At least we can plug into it. Cool, let's take these over to the bench and we'll modify them to how we need them. All right, for this, we're just gonna use our pin extraction tool to go ahead and remove these. Now, if you've never used a pin extraction tool, practice, meaning go to the, like, for this, we don't need this orange or this blue wire, so we can practice on those two and get an idea of what we need to do in order to get out the ones we have actually do need. In this case, there's just a little tooth inside of here that you have to lift up on to get the wire out. That's not to say it's easy. It's actually kind of a pain. All right, let's head over to the car and we'll repin this harness. So we'll take our notes that we wrote down earlier and we'll start with whatever yellow in the corner is here. That's gonna be two. So that's gonna be our grays. So yellow is negative, brown, blue is positive. All right. So we have our signal harness all set and ready to go. Now we'll just repeat the process on this, our speaker harness, and we'll be all set. Now one of the neat features of this amplifier are these guys right here. These are the inputs to the amplifier. Now this amplifier will take high level or low level. If you were to do high level, all you do is cut this guy off here, the RCA, just remove it, and you just speaker, boom, right on. If you're doing low level, you just plug this in. In this case, we're doing low level, but we're gonna hook it up with just regular speaker wires, these guys here. All we have to do is run our wire between here, solder this on, and this will be a direct plug-in into the amplifier. It's kinda cool. So now it's time to get started on wiring up the amplifier. But before we do that, let's take a look at this amplifier real quick. Now on the end of the amplifier right here, it says two channel or four channel. For us, we are gonna be doing a four channel. The reason why it is a two channel input is because they also make a marine version of this amplifier. So you could take a Bluetooth input, plug it directly into input one, and populate all the inputs here with just two channels of input. Makes it kind of nice, and also expands the installation options. Now on the surface of the amplifier, we also have a bunch of switches as well. This one here asks us, do we have a sub input? In this case, we don't have a sub input. We just have front and rear. So we're gonna leave it to all. Subsonic filter. What subsonic filter does is that's a high pass crossover for the sub subwoofer. It helps to cut out some of the unwanted, really low frequencies that the subwoofer might not create, thus making the amplifier run a little bit more efficient. We're going to go ahead and turn that on for right now. We can always turn it off later. We have the crossover switches for channels 1. can be high pass, all pass, or low pass. We're going to put it on high pass. We're going to do the same for rear. The subwoofer automatically comes. There's no on and off. It's automatically crossed over. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and turn our frequencies up to 80 hertz. That's a default setting we like to do. Now the subwoofer crossover comes set to 250. We're going to go ahead and turn that down to 80. We're going to go ahead and put the base EQ up on the subwoofer only and make sure that it's down on the rest. By up, we're going to put it at about halfway. That way it'll give us some room for tuning. Input level, we're going to turn that all the way down on all the channels. Now we have this amplifier set up and ready to go into the car as far as this section is concerned. One other thing we have on this is this guy right here. This is the power plug and this is actually made to come off. Let's go ahead and wiggle it a little bit. Also next to it is the subwoofer channel as well. On this end of the amplifier, we have our output for front and rear here. That's gonna take one of these style plugs that's gonna clip right into it. Now let's go ahead and get it mounted to our bracket and get this thing wired up.
The amplifier is wired up. So what we got going on is out this side here, it's gonna run up along the hump into the back is the signal wire. That's gonna get attached to this guy here. And then on this side, we have the speaker wire, this, this group, which is also, this is gonna run along the side here, come across the back of the seat, meet up with this and run into the trunk. It's gonna go across the front of the seat area and up behind and over and through the woods to grandmother's house. And then we have the power and ground which are here the subwoofer which is going to also run along the back it's going to stay on this side though it's not going to cross over and then we have our sub level control which is going to run up front with the power wire so this is the amplifier all set and ready to go we're going to go ahead and get this in the car and start running some wires Our signal and our speaker wire from the amplifier run back here all zip tied up along the factory wiring harness to this guy so what we want to do is go ahead and solder on our two plugs now a little trick for the heat shrink you don't want the heat shrink to constantly keep sliding around on this what we do is we slide it on and then we zip tie it up in place so it stays out of the way until we're ready for it So for those of you that never heard of speed wire before, speed wire is a nine conductor wire. It has a remote turn on, has a pair of whites, a pair of grays, a pair of greens, a pair of purples to match a standard aftermarket harness. It's great for something like this where we're going to need it for signal coming from the amplifier as well as output into a factory amplifier, but you can run it in anywhere in the car. For this, we're just gonna be connecting the fronts to this and we're gonna be running rear wires over and plug them into here. So all we have to solder into this one is the left and right fronts. On this particular harness, this harness is a real pain in the butt to rip in. Typically I just don't bother with it. I just try to move around as many of them as I can to get what I need and then I leave it alone. So what I did is I have whites, I have grays, a little heat shrink on there. Now what we need to do is match them up with their corresponding colors here to get the right positive and negative. Now one other thing that we tested that we forgot to mention is on the harness coming from the radio, this, this guy here that we made, there is a yellow green wire right over here. These two that weren't doing anything. This yellow green wire is remote turn on or accessory. So we went back in and pinned in a blue white to turn on the amplifier. To test that, you would simply just use your digital multimeter, set the DC, turn on and off the car and it'll get power and then it won't have power. So for the rears, we're just gonna go ahead and put some quick disconnects on here so that if we need to, we can unplug them. So we'll just wait for those speaker wires, plug them in, and then we'll have rear. So for the most part, we're done back here, but we're gonna wait to put the side panel on until Fernando gets finished, gets the rear speakers in, plug them in, we'll build the whole back of the car back up. Fernando just called me over. He just finished working on the rear deck, getting the R-Type speakers in it. Let's take a look. Roll kill, Ultimate. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Ultimate, it has the standard butyl, the standard aluminum, but then it adds this cool layer of foam onto it, which is awesome for rear decks. Really nice. Also, we made panel. We didn't have one that fit, huh? No, we don't. We made half inch Sentra and we put the foam around it. New wire run. And this is the wire I was talking about that we were running. We already went ahead it came down along here and we went ahead and connected it all up our rear speakers are in now the foam as you know is so that when we put the rear deck in it'll go ahead and push all that wonderful art type sound right through the rear deck
Good morning, everyone. How you doing today? So for the subwoofer in this, we're going with the R series subwoofer, this guy right here. It is the RW12D4. This is the new modeled R-Type subwoofer. We're going with the cool grill. R-Types have their own grill. I would show you the model number, but it's sitting underneath right here. here. Right here. Oh yeah, here we go. KTE12G.2. Mm. Now the box, what we did is we had Bright Star Car Audio make us a wedge-shaped box for this. It's not a prefab. We actually had him made this the spec for the woofer. This customer wanted a seal box. He wants a nice, tight, hitting base. He does not in the boom, so that's why we got him a seal box. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this put together, get put in the car. One of the cool things about the Alpine grill is that it covers the whole woofer. So it's like a smaller speaker grill. So you don't have to worry about anything denting the woofer getting into one of those cool, funky cosmetic grills. They also give you these guys here. These are the clips that actually hold the grill in place. And then it comes with a new trim ring. Got these cool little squares that are designed to line up with these. And you just kind of tap it in place. And by tap it, I mean beat the crap out of it so that it goes into place. And of course, it also comes with this cool logo. All right, so that puts us to one thing left to do other than tune it, that is the base knob. We have to figure out some place to put this thing. And it's harder than you would think. I mean, a lot of times you can just put it up underneath the dash, which is great, keep it out of the way where, you know, because you aren't gonna be using it all the time. It's not like you drive around riding the base knob. And cars now with these new shin busters, that's getting harder and harder, so now we have to find some other place to put it. I just don't like screwing it to panels where, you know, the nice thing about putting it underneath the dash is that if you're screwing it in, like most of the time you are, when you pull those screws out if you get rid of the car you, you don't actually see the screw holes because they're firing down you know because you can kind of hide them anyways let's get into the car and try to figure this out so the fuse holder is in place and ready to go made a bracket that mounted to the side piece of plastic here there's a hole in the firewall which i'll show in a second brought the wire up underneath this here underneath it and around and in and then connected it to the battery underneath here there was a whole factory hole already right here we've gone ahead and boot it up this obviously doesn't have a stick so if you needed to you could also drill through right there that's the factory boot this is all just rubber so it easily went through there all right so the place we've come up for the base knob is this this panel right here this is where the fuse box is is located right here and right next to it well let me show you so this is the big under dash panel right here fuse box light control switch Hole. So what we had to do is sand the back of the panel here to get all these little ribbies off. Naturally, Rockford doesn't make the neck for this all that long, even though they make it so that you can back mount it. We like to add shrink wrap to it just to keep it all nice and tight. We found that these tend to get loose over time when you take them out of their big housings. A little shrink wrap hardens them up. Seems to solve the problem. It's fire, dude. So for now, we'll go ahead and finish getting that mounted. That's the last piece of the puzzle. Went ahead and threw the subwoofer in the trunk. So it'll sit it right here in the corner. It's got the tapered back, so it sits up next to the seat really nice. We got all those boxes all set and ready to go. Speakers, old ones, gets those back. The excitement is too much. We really can't wait to hear how this sounds. We did turn it on to make sure everything worked, just because we don't like surprises. Naturally, waiting for this last piece of the puzzle. This is great for your lower back. Oh yeah. There we go, all put back together. Ooh, so smooth. Now, I know we spent a lot of time talking about the base knob, but sometimes, like in this car, that's really the only thing he's gonna have access to, because you know, you're know you not gonna see the amp, the sub is in the trunk. Sometimes that base knob is really important. Okay, stereo's in, finally. Now what we need to do is do all our testing. So the first thing we're gonna do is go in and test balance and fader and make sure we got that all correct. All right, that's two, that's one, 
All right, and that's three. So as trivial as testing balance and fader may sound to some of you, it's very important. Sometimes it's overlooked. Sometimes these amplifiers aren't marked clearly, like one, you know, front, rear, and stuff like that. And nothing sucks worse than trying to tune a car and like, you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't sound right. Especially if you're doing time correction and you have balance and fader wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on? All right, so test that. Now we're gonna do polarity testing. Let's get ready from tick, tick, tick. What do you got? I got greens on both sides. All right, let's check the rear. Wouldn't you know it, one is out of polarity. And see, there you go, that's why we do these tests, because that speaker number four is out of polarity. Now, that's easy enough to do. There's several places where contact was made. My guess, though, it was probably my fault, where we pushed those two, the gray, into our purples. So we'll just pop this panel back real quick and switch them. So even though we work on hundreds and hundreds of cars, we get it wrong too sometimes. That's why we do this check and I can't stress enough why you need to do it. So now what we want to do is do all our testing on the amplifier. This amplifier, the T-Series, they have basically a DD1 built into it. So the first thing we want to test is the input clip, which is over here. We're going to play 40 hertz, zero dB on the radio. Make sure your bass, treble, mid, and all that is turned all the way down. Go ahead and turn it up. Okay, right now we are all the way up. We're all the way up. All right, go to 1000 hertz. So now we're playing a thousand hertz zero dB volumes all the way up. We're still not getting a clip light, which is good. We didn't think we would. This has a nice good signal output. We're going to go ahead and start turning up the gains. See, there's a nice red light right there. We're going to turn it down. Blue is what we want. We'll come up here. We got a blue light there. Now we're going to go ahead and we're gonna start at zero dB on these. I know a lot of times we like to go up to five. We probably will. We're gonna do five on the sub though. So we're gonna do negative five on the subwoofer. Go ahead and put it on a thousand hertz, negative five. I just wanna figure out where this is at. We know where zero is, and we know where negative five is for the highs. This way, if we need to, we can turn it down, but it's already up as loud as we're probably gonna wanna play it. We have the sub set up. We put a little bit of bass EQ in there. Make sure you turn up the bass EQ to where you want it as you're setting this. It's gonna distort faster, so make sure you turn that down. All right, so we have this guy set up. We're gonna go ahead and turn this off. Now, when you're doing this, two things you need to do. One, unplug all the speakers, and two, unplug the bass knob. We're gonna plug all this back in, Hop into the front seat and take a listen. All right, so now we're back in the car and it is time to test the crossover. We're gonna use our ears for this, okay? And we're gonna isolate. Playing the fronts first, then we'll go to the rears, then we'll add in the sub. Right, Fernando? Correct. All right, hit play. We have them at 80 hertz where that is the test, you know, that when we set them up on the bench around 80 hertz, because I mean, it's not like it's digital. The fronts are, are playing, it, it actually sounds really good. However, I am gonna turn it up just a hair more because I feel it needs it. It's 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 right on that edge and I wanna go up a little higher because I feel like the volume is more important here than the ability to play super low bass. Go ahead and press play again. <laughs> All right, much better, much better. It just, just needed a little tweak, not much. I mean, not like we went up to 200 or anything. We literally just, just, mm. It's really hard when you're just trying to do it mm, a little bit. So what I recommend is going, let's see, we're at 80. Go up to 200, go up a substantial amount and then start slowly coming back down until you hear the right amount of bass. And there again, you don't have to look at the numbers. It's not the numbers, it's the ears and listening to the speaker and listening for the wrong sounds. And you'll know them. You'll know when it makes the wrong sounds. Now we're gonna go to the rear and we're gonna start over do the same thing now with the rears because they are six by nines we're probably gonna get a lot more mid bass out of them go ahead and press play there again a little hot we're gonna just just a touch boom whoa go ahead and put it back in the center for me oh it's one at a time yes uh, so slow all right, all right press Here play all right, so 
We have the crossovers on the interior where we want. I just want to do a little level, make sure that the rears, he wants rear fill, okay? It's crazy, some of you guys out there are gonna be, what? No, look, actually some people like rear fill. It's, it's okay, it's okay, okay? <laughs> Now, if you do like rear fill, this is where the term timber matching comes into play. Timber matching is where you buy speakers that all use the same style drivers, meaning they have the same tweeters, they have very similar mid-range. Performance is gonna be similar all across the board. In this case, they're all R-series speakers, which means they all have the nice R-series tweeter. So they all are gonna have very similar high end. It just blends better. That way you don't have something that's like this oddball tweeter that's distracting. We're gonna go ahead now and add in the subwoofer. <laughs> All right, so we have the volumes, the crossovers dialed in the way for this type of music. We're gonna play more music now because this isn't really what he listens to. We just want to set it for extreme and then we can fine tune from here. Sounds amazing. Nada. Nada. Nothing. 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 Nada. Nada. And he drops. Now, I will say this about Alpine R series speakers, and this has been the R series all the way back. If you're an undecisive person, meaning you can't make up your mind about anything, buy some R types, okay? <laughs> because they're good for everything. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter if you listen to all the way on the left or all the way on the right, they'll make you happy. It's, it's like the ultimate whiteboard experience speaker where you can just, it's gray. Everything's gray, you know, it's, and, and I mean the color gray, and that's a photography preference for those of you guys out there, you know what I mean? It's totally neutral. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're listening to, the R type will do it. And that's what's great about the speaker. I mean, I've been using them for years and years, actually since they, they came out, and they've only gotten better over the years. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those anomalies. It's like, I don't know what I want. You want an R-Type. Okay. Her voice sounds so familiar. What does she sing that I'm... It's one of those moments where you're listening to the customer's songs and you're like, I know, I know this voice. I just, so that, you know, you gotta go look it up on iTunes while you're sitting in the car and figure it out. Oh, and then you're like, Oh, that's dead. Ah! Yeah, Cause you're not just, hearing the song that she always sings. Right, we used to hang out together. On the weekends, yeah. back with Jenny on the block. Yeah, yeah right. totally. All right guys, I tell you what, we're gonna call this one finished. For those of you out there that are curious, this one took us a Full day. We actually had the car for two days, but we had something to do in the morning. Mm -hmm. Quick service for Sujeki. If you guys don't know who he is, go check out Car Audio Talk with Dean and Fernando. Anyways, he was one of the guests, Bill's boss. Everybody knows Bill's boss, right? Yeah, exactly. Anyways, exactly. so we would have had this for the whole day. It stayed the night. We came in in the morning. We took care of the last two things, were which were the bass knob and the subwoofer. Got those all put in. Mm -hmm. And of course, the tune, all important tune. Sometimes after working all day, it's nice to come in in the morning and actually do the tune in the morning. That way, you're, you're not tired. You're not fatigued. We seem to have better results that way. It's much more enjoyable, too. Oh, yeah. Totally. The downside, too, is that means whatever we're doing for the rest of the day will not compare to the fun we just got done doing. That's sometimes, why I enjoy this. sometimes, yes. Most of the time, no. Which is okay anything you can think of no i mean it sounds really good sounds really good something to keep in mind you guys out there a lot of these radios whether they're factory or aftermarket have what's called source tone adjust meaning if you're listening to cd it's one if you're listening to a phone it's another if you listen to aux it's another eq setting pioneer doesn't but kenwood does they offer source tone adjust and then they give you the ability like if you just have one amazing for all for all just one one ring to rule them all you can hit a button and it'll do that mm -hmm. this chevy is source tone adjust each media is different so when we're setting it up we actually have to go through and make sure we set each one up accordingly the customer probably knows this he's had the car for a couple years but it's just nice you know if, if you're the guy putting it in that don't just set one and hey see you bye check anything else all right i rambled on long enough let's get out of here we're not, we're gonna stay and listen to this some more, but we're gonna end this for you guys so you can get on with your day. Yep, on to the next one. The big piece is gonna be all the way to the back. But I believe it's gonna hit, so we're gonna cut it. Juice.
little bit. 